Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Nanos, where medicine makes perfect sense, and we continue our physiology playlist. This is the 24th video. In the previous video, we have discussed fixed principle. Today, we'll talk about the Donnan's equilibrium or the Donnan's effect. First, I'll explain it like your woke professor with his PowerPoint, and then I'll make you understand it, and then we'll go to the ultimate level of Medicosis wisdom. And at that level, you will never forget it. First, let's answer the questions of the last video. How many types of ATP pump do you have? And match the number here with the type of transport. Answers. You have four types of ATPase in your body. Sodium, potassium ATPase in every single stinking cell. Calcium ATPase in muscle cells. Hydrogen ATPase is in the kidney. Hydrogen potassium ATPase is found in two locations. Number one, in your stomach, this is the proton pump that you inhibit using the proton pump inhibitors such as omeprazole, lansoprazole, etc. And this same pump is also found in the kidney. Next question, as you see one here, this is what? Simple diffusion, no carrier, no ATPase. How about two? This is the primary active transport, primary sodium potassium ATPase. How about three? This is secondary active transport, secondary to the primary. It depends on the primary. This is what you call the sodium calcium exchanger or sodium calcium antiport or sodium calcium counter transport. How about four? Four is the paracellular route. This is simple diffusion. Next question. How many liters of normal saline do you have to infuse into a patient in order to deliver just one liter to his or her plasma compartment, assuming that he is an average dude with a weight of 60 kilograms? And here is how you do it, Jeffrey. When you infuse the normal saline, you'll infuse it all intravenously. No kidding. This is the plasma compartment. Okay. And as you know, Plasma is just one, two, three interstitial space. So interstitial space is three fourths of the extracellular fluid and the plasma is just one fourth. Since the plasma is only one fourth of the extracellular fluid, here's how you do it. One fourth of X equals one liter. Therefore, X equals four stinking liters and this is the answer. Think about it. Let's say you gave four liters to this patient. Oh, the fluid will flow between the plasma and the interstitial space until we achieve equilibrium, which will happen when the interstitial space has three fourths, i.e. three liters, and the plasma will only have one liter, which is what's required. Great, but why wouldn't the fluid go from the extracellular space to the intracellular space because you did not change the tonicity, doofus. You gave a normal saline, which has the same osmolality as your freaking body. Now, the Donnan's equilibrium or the gibbs donnans law or effect. Let me do it like your professor. Okay, it's defined as the presence of non-diffusible ions on one side of the membrane. This will affect the distribution of diffusible ions on both sides of the semi-permeable membrane. And this is the case before equilibrium, and this is the case at or after equilibrium. Okay, didn't, do you understand anything? No. Now, let's do it the medicosis way. First, what the flip do we mean by the non-diffusible ions, ions that cannot diffuse through a semi-permeable membrane? What are these? These are plasma proteins. They cannot pass through the membrane. They are too big. Great. What are the diffusible ions? This is your sodium and chloride. They can diffuse. They are small. Next, do you consider plasma proteins to be positively charged or negatively charged? If you remember my video on electrophoresis when we talked about multiple myeloma in my glorious hematology playlist, I've told you that this is how we do the serum protein electrophoresis. You put the stinking proteins here and suddenly you'll see them repel from the negative electrode and go towards the positive electrode. <gasps> Since they migrate towards the positive electrode and you know from physics that opposites attract this is positive, therefore the plasma proteins have to be negative. They are anions because they are attracted to the anode. Okay, medicosis, but what is the Donnan's equilibrium? First, let's do some housekeeping. Remember, my friend, that we have only two forces that move ions, only two. The concentration gradient and the electrical gradient. Concentration gradient from high concentration to low concentration. Cool. How about electrical gradient from positive to negative? Or vice versa. Positives attract and likes repel. Donnan's equilibrium is how can we reconcile between these two forces? 
Here is how it happens before the Donnan's equilibrium. It looks like this. In the protein compartment, which is in the blood vessel, because this is the only compartment that has plasma proteins, because plasma proteins are too big to pass. We have nine plasma protein particles. And as you know, plasma proteins are negative. Therefore, we have to have nine positive something. Oh, in this case, it's the sodium. Cool. And inside the cell, you have nine sodiums and nine chloride. Wonderful. Now look here at equilibrium or after the Donnan's equilibrium. What happened? Oh, the proteins have rigged the game. First, let's focus on one aspect and one aspect only. Regarding the concentration gradient, hey sodium, would you rather go this way or this way? Huh, since I have 12 sodiums here and 6 sodiums here, I'd rather go this way, down the concentration gradient. Thank you. But the concentration gradient is not the only game in town. We also have the electrical gradient. Hey sodium, when it comes to electrical gradient, would you rather go towards the protein compartment or towards the non-protein compartment? Okay, let me think. Here I have only six negatives to attract me. But look at here, I have three plus nine equals 12 negatives to attract me. Therefore, I'll go from the non-protein compartment to the protein compartment. At a certain point, these two opposite forces will equalize. Equalize equilibrium. This is the Donnan's equilibrium. Okay, Medicosis, but what do I have to gain? Oh, six consequences. All kinds of gains. Three equalities and three inequalities. Let's start with the three equalities. The concentration gradient of sodium equals the electrical gradient of sodium. Yep, this happened exactly at equilibrium. Number two, positive charges and negative charges are equal in each compartment. Oh, so you talk about this compartment alone and then we talk about this compartment on its own. Let's start with the protein compartment. Count the positive charges, please. Only 12. How about the negative charges? 9 plus 3 equals 12. Oh, positive equals negative. Perfecto. Let's go to the non-protein compartments. You have 6 negative and 6 positive. Awesome. Equality number three, the product, oh, multiplication, ooh, sodium and chloride in the protein compartment equals the product of sodium and chloride in the non-protein compartments. Let's verify, three times 12 equals 36, six times six equals 36. Beautimus. Now the three inequalities, the sum, oh, addition, of sodium and chloride in the protein compartment is greater than the sum of sodium and chloride in the non-protein compartment. Let's verify. 3 plus 12 equals 15, but 6 plus 6 is only 12. Oh, yeah. Therefore, if you have 15 here, but 12 here, in other words, if the number, the number of particles is greater here than here, therefore, the osmotic pressure, which cares about the number, not the size, the number, is gonna be greater in the protein compartment than the non-protein compartment, which results in water shift from the non-protein compartment and towards the protein compartment. And this is the beauty of the Donnan's equilibrium. We have six consequences of the Donnan's equilibrium. One to five is BS, six is huge. Six is the water shift from the non-protein compartment into the protein compartment, from within the cell and into the plasma. So we have done it like your professor and then we understood it. Now let's go to wisdom, baby. Okay, smart cookie. Please summarize physiology to me in just one word. What in the world? Um, maybe this is um, homeostasis. Perfect. How about pathology in one word? Um, I don't know. Lack of homeostasis. Wow, you have some potential. Summarize internal medicine to me just in one word. Ooh, the answer is hypoperfusion. You don't believe me? Consider this. Hypoperfusion to your heart equals stable angina or unstable angina or non stimmy or God help you, the dreaded evil ST elevation myocardial infarction. Hypoperfusion to your brain, you get TIA or worse, ischemic stroke. The difference is TIA is reversible, ischemic stroke is irreversible. Oh, medicosis, but my professor added that TIA happens in less than 24 hours, ischemic stroke if it's for more than 24 hours. Um, your professor hasn't opened a textbook for 10 plus years. Shame on him and the horse that, I'm sorry, too far. Hypoperfusion to your kidney, your kidney will suffer from pre-renal azotemia, which is an acute renal failure or now known as acute kidney injury. Hypoperfusion to your lung, your lung can get a red infarction because of the dual blood supply. Hypoperfusion to your gut, you get mesenteric ischemia. 
hypoperfusion to your hands, you get Raynaud's phenomenon. It's red, white, and blue. Hypoperfusion to your liver, you get ischemic hepatitis. To your biliary system, you get a calculus cholecystitis. Hypoperfusion to your pituitary gland, you get Sheehan postpartum necrosis or Sheehan syndrome. And please don't forget that shock, by definition, is tissue hypoperfusion. And this is internal medicine in just one slide. Yeah, baby. And that's why the Donnan's equilibrium is doozy. It takes water from your cell to your blood in order to perfuse your organs. Without your Donnan's equilibrium and your oncotic pressure, your heart is history, your brain is a mystery, your kidney is screwed, and your gut is bending over backwards. Your hand is patriotic, your bile is full of stones, and mommy cannot lactate. Now you understand and contemplate the significance of the Donnan's equilibrium. Now, the next segment is a joke, not to be taken seriously. I'm just using it as a segue to my analogy towards the Donnan's equilibrium. So please don't say in the comment section, Oh, but because how dare you say such a thing? I disagree with you vehemently. Shut up. Get your head out, you wrist finger. It's a joke. In 1979, Phil Donahue interviewed the Nobel Prize winning economist Milton Friedman. Phil said, quote, When you see the disparate plight of millions of people in underdeveloped countries, when you see the greed and concentration of power within it, did you ever have a moment of doubt about capitalism? The famous economist replied, First of all, tell me, is there some society you know that doesn't run on greed? You think Russia doesn't run on greed? You think China doesn't run on greed? What is greed? Of course, none of us are greedy, it's only the other fellow who's greedy. The world runs on individuals pursuing their own self-interest. The great achievement of civilization have not come from government bureaus. Einstein didn't construct his theory under order from a bureaucrat. Henry Ford did not revolutionize the automobile industry that way. And here are my two cents. Dr. Nazib didn't revolutionize medical education and help millions of students around the globe under an order from the Ministry of Education. The only cases in recorded history in which the masses have escaped from the kind of grinding poverty that you're talking about is where they have had capitalism and largely free trade. A similar theory is presented in Dr. Thomas Sowell's book Basic Economics. Imagine that three weeks ago you went to fix falafel and you realize that the falafel sandwich has increased from $5 a sandwich into $9. <gasps> oh, it's because they are greedy. Imagine that this week you went to the same store and now they have buy one get one free at $5. What happened? What's your theory now? Did they become generous over time? Did they suddenly convert and atone and change from devils to angels? Or maybe it is something more fundamental than that. Supply and demand. This is basic economics. Shut up, medicosis. Just tell me what are you trying to say. I'm trying to say that people act in their own self-interest. Okay, what the flip does that have to do with the Donnan's equilibrium? That plasma proteins are acting in their own self-interest. Oh, how? We have established that perfusion is paramount for the survival of your organs. And therefore, we need the water to flow from the non-protein compartment into the protein compartment and maintain an effective arterial blood volume to perfuse these doozy organs. Cool! Do you know what determines the flow of water? Number one, the oncotic pressure, because there are plasma proteins here, but not here. Therefore, water flow from here to here. Number two, the Donnan's equilibrium. The proteins have literally rigged the system so that there are more ions here than here. 15 versus 12. So water will flow from here to here. The plasma proteins are acting in their own self-interest. So next time when your professor asks you, Hey, hey student, stand up. What is the Donnan's equilibrium? With such unction in his voice, in your mind, Donnans should disappear and Friedman should appear. The proteins are acting in their own self interest Oh, the presence of non-diffusible ions, proteins, on one side of the membrane affects the distribution of the diffusible ions, sodium and chloride, here is 15, but here is only 12, on both sides of semi-permeable membrane. And this is one of the forces that allow the water to flow from the non-protein compartment into the protein compartment, maintaining an effective arterial blood volume sufficient for tissue perfusion. And that's it. If your woke professor explain it like this, I will retire from YouTube and work as a whopper flopper. Today's question. Imagine that you have protein compartment and non-protein compartment. You had six 
plasma protein particles. In the non-protein compartments, you had four chlorides and four sodium. In the protein compartment, you had two chlorides and how many sodium at equilibrium? Please enter this question in the comment section. You will find the correct answer in the next video. I love you guys. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my electrolytes course and my antibiotics course. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.